Smile 2 is out in theaters, and this one promises to be even bigger, even scarier, even smilier. Well, I checked out the film to tell you whether or not that's the case, and I'm going to let you know right now. This is going to be a spoiler-free video, although I will have a spoiler-filled one down the road, so if you want to subscribe, hit the notification bell, I would appreciate it. It's, uh, it's free of charge. It's, it's a great deal here. You know what else is pretty great? Smile 2. It's not perfect, it has a few issues, but for the most part, I had a good time with this movie. And this is coming from someone that enjoyed Smile. I went with a buddy who absolutely hated the first film, I'm not sure actually why he came to this one, but it was closer to something that he could appreciate, I guess. For me, the only opinion that actually counts here, I thought it was a really good follow-up to the first. Now, I was a little concerned this was going to be another trap situation. If you remember that chestnut from a few months back, the M. Night Shyamalan vehicle, also focusing on a pop star. Thankfully, not the case. This movie's far better directed, far better storyline, and the most important thing, the pop singer actually has talent. Naomi Scott's had a pretty bad track record for me over the years. She did that live-action Power Rangers movie that people pretended was good for some reason. She did that terrible Charlie's Angels movie. And of course, she was our new Jasmine in the Aladdin live-action film. She was fantastic as Jasmine. The movie itself has no reason to exist. And here we are again. Now she has the movie on her shoulders. And I have to tell you, as the expression goes, fourth time is the charm. If you would allow me to, I'd like to simp for a few minutes on this woman. What a absolute powerhouse of a performance here. I know they don't really hand out awards often when it comes to the horror genre, although I think Hereditary had some a few years ago. This is not going to be one of those movies, but I think she absolutely deserves some appreciation because she freaking puts in the work here. Not only does she look great, sound great on the vocals, but holy hell, the emotional roller coaster this poor woman's going through throughout the film is second to none. There is a supporting crew, who cares? This is pretty much Naomi Scott's movie. Her character is Sky Riley. She's fallen on some tough times, got into drugs, had a bad car accident, killed someone in the process, and now she's trying to pick up the pieces, get back into that spotlight again. And things would have been going off without a problem if it weren't for that pesky smile. Yes, the shit-eating demon is back. Smiley McSmilerson has found a new target, and she's going to have a hard time singing her ass out of this one. The rest, as they say, is her story. She's going to lose her damn mind so hard in this movie, the audience is going to start getting confused as to what's real and what's not by the time the final act kicks in. Now, I do think this movie is a slight tad tinge better than the first, but there's some caveats. I think it's way too long. This film is over two hours, two hours and seven minutes. Yeah, credits account for some of that, but still, it's a two-hour film, folks. A two-hour horror can sometimes be too much. And the annoying part is there's no reason for it to be. There is a section in the middle of this movie. A good bulk of it is useless. It doesn't need to be padded out so long. You could cut this thing up and you would have a freaking awesome 90 minute movie. But as it stands, you still have a really excellent time if you're into this genre. The whole like, you know, ghost is attached to you, it's fucking with you sort of a thing. That's a, that's a genre now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to give some solid props to writer and director Parker Finn on this one. He also did the previous movie. Guy only has a couple movies under his belt, but holy shit, the level of artistry on display here is palpable. This is a very pretty looking movie. There's some really creative stuff happening behind the camera. I like some of these views he does where he follows someone, tracks to something else, goes back. A lot of playful camera stuff going on. If you were up the wall annoyed by the amount of pop music in Trap, you don't have to worry about that here. While there are a couple songs sprinkled throughout, we're not getting full renditions. Alright, we're not putting out an album. I mean, maybe they are, but it's not on the screen. I also want to give a special shout out to my local Regal Theater for the projection going out several times during the film's showing. That was fun. Not only am I on the edge of my seat waiting for something to jump scare me half to death, I also have to worry about the screen straight up killing itself. Fortunately, it happened in the final 20 minutes of the movie where the stakes couldn't have been higher. And then for the remainder of the film, the lights stayed on inside of the movie complex. That's <laughs> what a magical experience the movie theater has turned into over the years. I mentioned the jump scares. You better believe they're back. There's a lot of them. 
they're tense as crap, and they got me, I'd say, 85% of the time, full on like, oh, oh my stars, clutching the pearls, looking at the person next to me. Did you get, ja did that get you too? They're very well done. Yes, they have obnoxiously loud musical beats hit when it happens. <laughs> But that's why you're going to this type of movie. You like the adrenaline rush, you like the fear. I don't suffer from any real form of anxiety. I'm pretty much a perfect specimen across the board. But these movies do something to me on a personal level. I do feel anxious when I watch these films. The way they're shot, the way the music is composed, the way it's acted out, the slow builds, the way they position the cameras. It works. It hits me different than any other movie. I'm sitting there anxious, like, uh, what's gonna pop out? What's gonna happen? Parker Finn does a great job of getting you in the psyche of the person that's being tortured. I felt like I was being tortured during the movie. And who doesn't like getting tortured for two hours? It sounds bad, but I mean it in the most complimentary way possible. Last thing I'll point out is the violent acts, the gore, everything is magnified quite a bit here. The first one definitely didn't shy away from it, but this one takes things and runs. Holy crap, there were some brutal parts of the film. Legs getting busted up. Stomach getting ripped open. People taking sharp objects and just impaling themselves. And of course, we gotta put that smile on the face. You know, gotta keep that going. Overall, Smile 2 was an absolute win for me. Could have definitely cut it shorter. Could have trimmed down that middle section a little bit, get rid of some of that fat there in the midsection. And you have a banger of a movie. It captured me for two hours when the screen wasn't going out. And so yeah, I definitely say check this one out at theaters if you liked the first. And even if you hated the first one, maybe there's something more here that can win you over? I don't know, I, I still think that it's, uh, it's worth checking out. Again, I'm gonna have a spoiler-filled video on it in a day or two, so definitely stick around for that. Hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell, maybe like the video if you want, and if you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out my second channel, Adam Does Rants, where I'm complaining about my wife being super loud in the other room! She heard me. Uh, yeah, I'm complaining about really stupid things uh, to hopefully get a laugh or two out of you. Lastly, if you love what I'm doing, patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Different tier levels, different ways to support me and my one-man operation. I would absolutely appreciate it. Look at that smile. Look at those pearly whites. Still hearing you.